What's going on everyone? It's Token and we are finally back with more VGC Common the Ladders. This is our Battle Spot laddering series where we use teams either I build or other people in the VGC community build and we take them onto the ladder. It is a brand new week but we don't have a brand new team even though we usually do because I did not adequately uh, showcase this team on the channel unfortunately because Pokemon is a game that can... It can, it can really take a toll on your emotions, and that's exactly what it did for me last week. Um, I was doing a little bit of laddering before I wanted to start recording. And I literally lost six games in a row, all due to some game-changing RNG that happened towards me, and I was getting none in the other direction. It was uh, really demoralizing, and it uh, kind of took, it tripped me of my motivation to bring you guys these videos at the time. Um, I love doing this, so uh, when I do when I do get into moods like that, which isn't too frequently, so you guys shouldn't worry about that being a reoccurring thing. But anyways, when I do get in a mood like that, um, it definitely goes away pretty quickly. So I just decided to chill out, uh, focus on some other things, and then decide we'd hop right back into it next week and start out really strong this week. Uh, we'll definitely have all four episodes for this week going up, and maybe even a bonus episode for you guys. So definitely, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to smash that like button for me, that thumbs up, that'd be great. And also subscribe to the channel if you aren't already subscribed for much more VGC content. And yes, we are rocking out with that Drift Blim Lele team. And uh, you guys know exactly what it consists of. As long as you've been here, I'll repeat it though. Drift Blim, Lele, Garchomp, Snorlax, and Metagross, and Celestilla, in case you guys did not know. Let's just hop right back onto... Oh, oh, I just said no. Didn't realize. Alright, let's just hop right back in the ladder and try to have some fun games. Um, I'm just trying I'm just trying to have fun I'm as much as I want to take this serious because I want to be as serious as possible for you guys and and uh, give you guys as quality of uh, like always bring always give my best effort I don't want to take it too serious to the point where I let my emotions get the better of me and then I just don't end up uh, wanting to upload content for you guys because I know that if I'm not in a good mood then my videos won't be of good quality and uh, quality is always my um, my biggest priority so um, uh, at the same time, we're just going to try to have fun. If we get crit, we'll laugh it off and we'll just try to have some fun. Because at the end of the day, this is just Battle Spot. It doesn't matter that much. Um, I've just been taking VGC really, really seriously because it is looking very likely that I will be attending Utah Regionals as we get a 1756 opponent from Hiroshima, Japan. So that's very interesting considering you guys know the history of Hiroshima. So that's, that's really interesting to see a Hiroshima uh, player. They are going to have a team though of Gigalith, Tapu Lele, Nihiligo, Porygon 2, Celestilla, and um, Incineroar. So that's a really interesting team. And they chose their team really quickly. So they must have a standard answer for uh, the Balloon Lele lead. So I'm thinking, do we even want to lead that, honestly? Yeah, I'm actually going to switch it up on them. Because they, sh they chose their team incredibly quickly. So... Do I hit them with the Garchomp? Do I hit them with the Snorlax? Uh, they could still lead. Or do I go my own? No, we need we need Garchomp just to protect us from Incineroar. Um, and then do we go Drift Bloom Layla in the back? Do we bring it in the back or do I just bring Layla in the back? I think I just bring Layla in the back. Drift Bloom doesn't do nearly as well as a backup. Um, definitely like Snorlax. Yeah, we'll, we'll go Snorlax and we'll go Layla in the back. But, um... Uh, yeah, it's looking very likely that I will be attending Utah Regionals at the beginning of next month. And um, I have been trying to take VGC as serious as possible so that I feel as um, adequately prepared for that event as possible. So I hope you guys can understand that. And I hope you understand why I took a break too. Just trying to prioritize uh, making sure that our videos are at the best quality as possible. Let's get into this game though. I lead with Garchomp. Metagross, as my opponent, is going to lead with Incineroar. Um... They're going to lead with Incineroar and that, and that beautiful uh, <laughs> Nihiligo. So, um, Nihiligo, alright, alright, we're not in the best position here. Because of the fact that the HP Ice... Mm, I do think we live that, though. I think we definitely live the HP Ice. Um, huh, what do I want to do here? This is the bigger threat. I think we live the HP ice, so I am going to just... I'm going to hammer arm and protect. I'll just stay in. We'll protect Garchomp. And I got the hammer arm ready to go. As my opponent did fake out the Garchomp slot. 
and we're faster than the Nihiligo, so I guess Trick Room's being set up here. We will Oko that Incineroar, though, which is beautiful. And is that Trick Room being set up? Yeah, that is Trick Room being set up. Otherwise, that would not have been slower. So that's really interesting on my opponent's end. They'll probably bring in Porygon 2 here to threaten the Garchomp, honestly. But uh, I threaten another Oko on the Porygon 2. Yeah, Porygon 2 comes in, and I threat I threaten the Oko on that, so... Um, while we do is switch into Snorlax, and we just hammer him again. So that's exactly what we are going to do. And um, I'm sorry if there's like a really bad glare from my computer onto my glasses, but there's really nothing I can do about that. And um, contacts have been pretty irritable as of late, so I just wanted to give those a little bit of a break. Um, my opponent shouldn't have anything from Metagross, honestly. So Ice Beam into Garchomp, as very predicted. And, uh, yeah, just another hammer arm into the Porygon, too. Not enough to take it out, but we will become even more slower, which is nice. And the Power Gem and the Metagross. Yeah, that's, that's not even... That damage does not matter. So, yeah, we're just going to go for another hammer arm, and we will just curse up with Snorlax. And the match was just forfeited. Oh, God. They didn't have an answer for that. And I'm very glad I didn't lead with Balloon Lele. So that was awesome. That's a perfect way to kick off this episode. That is perfect. But yeah, Metagross is a pretty strong answer, honestly. The Metagross that were choice band and Metagross is a pretty strong answer to Trick Room teams because unless they have like something like Araquanid, that's a different scenario. Um, Araquanid is actually pretty good on our team. If, if Trick Room's already set up, um, Araquanid is actually pretty good against our team. But um, other than against Araquanid, Metagross has a good matchup against Porygon 2, has a good matchup against Gigalith. Has a good matchup against Snorlax. It has a pretty much a good matchup against all the Trick Room. Uh, the Pokemon that like to really abuse their offensive prowess in uh, Trick Room. And sorry, I just popped my knuckles. That was completely on accident. But yeah, uh, Metagross has a good matchup against all the Pokemon that like to um, abuse Trick Room. So um, I really do. I really do like it when um, a team looks a little Trick Roomy. Um, it's, it's honestly a really good answer, and that's exactly why I prioritize leading with it because I know that uh, we get we can get off um, heaps of damage against um, uh, Porygon twos. I knew that we we can obviously outspeed and hit Incineroar really hard. So uh, yeah, uh, I liked it. I liked it. And my opponent probably thought that we were Scarf Garchomp there, so they went on the safe side and prioritized faking that out. We are going to get a 1755 opponent from Tokyo, Japan, though, named Moon. And they are, and they have the really cool uh, sleep signs next to their name. That's actually really cool. I didn't even know you could put those there. But they are going to have a team of Garchomp, Tapu Koko, Arcanine, Celestilla, Gashodon, and Snorlax. So looking at this team, uh, Gashodon can be a little annoying considering that. Well, um, I've said this before, but uh, we don't have a Grass type move for that. So uh, Gashodon can bulk out some hits. Uh, we do got really powerful moves though in Tectonic Rage, and. Uh, in Zen Head, but and in Psychic, both in Psychic Terrain, so and Cell is still a 1v1s it, so those are all things to keep in mind. I definitely like Cell Stilla here. It is threatened by the Arcanine and the Tapu Koko, but um Cell Stilla is one of our best answers for opposing Cell Stillas, unfortunately. Uh, we do not have the best answer for Cell Stilla considering our guard jump. We don't have a fire type and our guard jump doesn't even run a fire type move, so we have zero fire type coverage. So uh, and we have zero electric type coverage, so uh, Cell Still is a. Uh, it can be a little difficult to play against if it's uh, uh, used very well. Uh, my opponent is ready to go, and I need to get myself ready to go. So I'm thinking, let's go Metagross, and let's go my Cell Stilla. Do we do it? Do we go Garchomp? Do we just go Cell Still? Yeah, we'll, we'll go Cell Still. We'll see if it works out. It might not. We'll see. Um, Tapu Koko. Yeah, Tapu Koko. The, how my opponent uses Tapu Koko is going to determine the winner of this game. So we'll see exactly how they use it and uh, see if we can uh, maybe get those predictions and everything correctly. So let's see if we can snag another win here. That was a really nice, really quick forfeit we got on that um, opponent. And they got the Love Balls. <laughs> they got the love balls. So my opponent went with a very nice lead to counter our lead uh, of Celestilla and 
Sal Stella and um, that uh, Tapu Coco. That's a good lead. That is a good lead. Because obviously the Sal Stella puts a lot of pressure onto our Tapu Lele, but um, hmm. yeah, we definitely want a Tailwind here. Yeah, Tailwind Protect. Um, so I've been seeing a lot of att really heavily attack invested cells still so even when I burn them They're still putting off a little bit too much damage for my liking so um, I'm tailwinding and protecting so that hopefully the heavy slam goes into um, To the tapu lay I saw and then I can hopefully disable That heavy slam and uh, that'll make dealing with the cell still a lot more manageable I do get a thunderbolt into the layout so maybe a Yeah, the double target into our Lele. This is going to be a flash cannon um, Sal Stella, which is much easier for us to deal with, honestly. Much, much, much easier. But we will, either way, we will be prioritizing disabling that flash cannon. And uh, Tapu Coco is going to withdraw. And it's going to go into Arcanine, which is great. We'll get solid damage off on Arcanine. And uh, we will, like I said, we'll disable that flash cannon. And we'll just move from there. Uh, looks like this is going to be a special attacking Sal Stella, though, so probably burning it won't be. Um, a, pri a, a huge priority still might be good, but not like a huge priority like usually. Uh, we do get that Arcanine down to a very nice amount of health because it's very, it didn't get to the point where it's very popped. And that is key so that um, we can just take it out here with another powerful attack. So I'm actually going to Shadow Ball that Arcanine, hoping that takes it out. I think that should take it out. And then I'm going to Psychic the Cell Stilla. So hopefully a Shadow Ball takes it out. The match is just forfeited. What is going on? What is actually going on? What is going on? Oh, I don't know what's going on. That that is that's crazy. We just had two people forfeit in a row. That is insane. Um, I don't think my opponent was in that poor of a position there uh, at all. But um, I guess they thought they thought worse. I guess they thought worse. So um, we are going to get two forfeits for some reason. I guess this is a really good welcome back to getting back on battle spot. The opposite of hacks. I just have people forfeiting on me. I guess I guess that's not even the opposite of hacks. But either way, it's a really good welcome back onto uh, battle spot. Especially now that we're 1775, and that's around where I was before. I just got um, pretty much like raped by <laughs> by hacks. So uh, that's nice, I guess. Anyways, we're going to get another opponent 1697 from Japan and they are going to have an extremely interesting team of um, why can I not think of that Pokemon's name <laughs> I always forget Mimikyu why do I forget about Mimikyu Mimikyu, Togedemaru, Nihiligo, Salamence, Hariyama, and Garchomp so right off the bat uh, the Trick Room setter in Mimikyu really sticks out to me, especially for that Hariyama. And it looks like they also have some staple lead for this uh, Tapu Lele Drift Blim combination because they went they went right to the, they put, chose their Pokemon really quickly. So it makes me want to switch it up a little once again um, on this opponent. And I do think I will I will do that. Um, I kind of like leading with Lele just so Togedemaru can't go for. Uh, fake out on us. I do like that. Um, yeah, I'd probably like some fake out trick room shenanigans. Uh, hmm. I'm a little afraid of, huh. What can be so wrong about this lead though? I don't know. I'm still, I'm still going to rock out with it and I'll just bring Metagross in the back along with, so still it doesn't look bad. Uh, yeah, all my opponent has for Cell still is Salamence, and Salamence has a really poor matchup against a lot of other things, so we'll rock out with that. Um, I kind of didn't want to go with the lead just because I know my opponent chose probably their most optimal counter to the Drift Blim Lele uh, combination. However, though, I can't see... I can't see how this can still be too too bad for us, even if my opponent was to lead with Togedumaru and... Um, and uh, Mimikyu, due to the fact that I can just burn the Mimikyu, and I can, uh, or I, or I can double up on Togedemaru, trying to avoid, uh, trying to avoid hacks, because I don't want to be nuzzled. I really do not want to be nuzzled. Um, I think I will double on the Mimikyu, honestly. Uh, Mimikyu rarely want, runs per. Mm, will that knock it out? We're gonna we're going we're going to see. 
this is something we're going to see. So we will go for the Shadow Ball. Oh, we get the special defense drop. So this actually will Oko as long as this isn't Focus Sash Mimikyu. And there's a high chance that the Togedomaru or the... Um, the Togedomaru or the... Uh, oh, play rough as well. Okay, they're both faster than my Lele, which is pretty interesting to me. There's a high chance that the... Um, that the Togedomaru or the Nihiligo are going to be Sash. So... There's that. We get rid of the Mimikyu, which is a huge threat. Um, surprise to me, though, that my opponent didn't uh, go for a Ghost-type move on my Lele instead of prioritizing the... Uh, prioritizing going for that... <sighs> prioritizing going for that, uh, what's it called, move. Um, let's Tailwind up and let's Protect. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, instead of going for that Play Rough. As we get another forfeit. <laughs> I don't understand. Oh my god. I do not understand. What did I do that forced that forfeit? Why did you bring Salamats? <laughs> I, I literally do not understand. I, I don't know what's going on. We're going to try to squeeze in another battle since everything's been forfeits. And uh, hopefully we can win <laughs> another game. Hopefully this one isn't just by forfeit. We'll see what happens. We get a 1796 opponent from uh, Costa Rica, it looked like which is pretty cool and they're actually going to have a pretty good team for us because not only does this team have double duck which our team can really struggle with and also is going to have uh it's going to have a lowland muck and as well as trick room so this is actually a really good team against us um however we still do have to lead with our combination that's the only way we can adequately deal with um that double duck combination that is ever so strong and this team has the tapu coco so uh this team has the power this team has the power that's exactly what it needs honestly so oh, okay this yeah this is going to be this is going to be a hard game to win because then there's also the buzz hole which really threatens snorlax and even even muck is pretty good against snorlax because of the fact that it can knock off its pinch berry before it uses it then you can't use recycle so um, this is a really interesting game. Um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think what we need to bring in this one. Uh, uh, Metagross looks decently strong, but I'm worried about a lot of things. Uh, I guess we have to bring Metagross though, and we pretty much have to bring Snorlax, considering that the uh, Tapu Koko threatens it threatens out still a little bit too much to my liking. So we'll see how this one goes. Um, this is uh, this this player has a really good matchup against our team though, so we'll see how this one goes. Hopefully, we can finish it off with a win and cap off this very wild, interesting episode <laughs> on a high note. So we'll see what happens. We do lead Drift Blim and Lele, and our opponent is going to go with Double Duck and Gold Duck and Pelipper. I don't know why this is called Gobble, Double Duck. Anyways, I have no clue who theorized that name for this for that little team archetype in uh, Gold Duck and Pelipper. Considering that uh, Pelipper is obviously not a duck, it is um, obviously a seagull. But um, to each his to each his own. <laughs> Almost ruined that. Um, I'm going to Tailwind and I am going to protect Lele. Um, I played a little balls to the wall against a previous opponent where I didn't protect Lele, and uh, that backfired on me quickly. So I will protect. Um, because my opponent can just go for that Water MZ on on Lele, and hopefully it is on Lele. I just couldn't I couldn't chance losing my Lele uh, right here. So we'll see we'll see exactly how uh, uh, which one they targeted and exactly exactly how much damage this is going to do. And my opponent did go for it on Lele, and I think most uh, most players do do that. Um, even if they know the protect is coming, they really that's still really quality damage either way, especially through protect, knowing that I can't protect this next turn, and obviously they're going to tailwind as well. So um, yeah, that's actually that's actually uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, what we can do here, 
is we can I don't think any move that Golduck can go for can take out our uh, Lele here so we can Shadow Ball into the Pelipper and we can just Psychic into Golduck we should be able to tank out a hit and uh, ooh, nice play nice nice play we will at least be Shadow Ball into Pelipper but I didn't expect to protect that was a nice play on my opponent's end as we did Psychic right into that Golduck slot. And we will take a Hurricane likely on Lele. It is on Lele. It's not going to take us out. But it's definitely, we're not in the best position because of that. Um, I'm going to go for another Shadow Ball just to take out the Pelipper. And do I go into Snorlax here? What do I go into here? The Scald is, Scald is so obvious. Yeah, I feel like Snorlax is our best chance of stalling out this rain. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go into Snorlax, and I'm going to Shadow Ball the Pelipper uh, again. Opponent's definitely thinking about their play because of that special defense drop. It's actually really huge because we wouldn't be able to two-hit KO the Pelipper um, otherwise with our uh, Drift Blim, but because of that, we um, we are going to be able to two-hit KO it. So we'll see if my, my opponent stayed in with the Pelipper. And uh, we will go for that Shadow Ball on as Pelipper does withdraw. So I should have went for at least we're getting a little bit of chip damage on the Coco though, which is um, honestly a pretty huge deal. So uh, that's good. That's good at least. So Goduck will be going for the Skull on on Drifloom. So now I wish I stayed in with the Lele. So that's a really good prediction on my opponent's end. And we do not get another special defense drop, which is fine, obviously. So here I'm actually going to disable Scald on the Golduck, and uh, and I'm going to curse up with Snorlax. Um, hopefully we don't get Scald run at any point, so that Snorlax can do some huge damage in this one. Um, disabling Scald is a priority just so to to avoid Scald burns from the Golduck, as my opponent will likely go for a Thunderbolt with Tapu Koko on the Drip Limb and uh, Scald onto uh huh they prioritize going for another scald on the drift limb which is pretty interesting to me i'm going to disable scald because i don't want that to burn our snorlax and the volt switch also on, nope, on on the snorlax that does pretty hefty damage So now my opponents already use their Z move, and they likely they likely do have the Hydro Pump, which is pretty scary. But um, you are always playing, you are always, always playing with accuracy with that. So um, so that's not too bad. And how many turns of rain are left? That, tell him beat it out. Tell him beat it out. And the rain didn't end though, and that's an issue. Because, mm, yeah, an Ice Beam's definitely going to take us out. And, uh. Yeah, and there's not much of anything I can do about this Buzz Hole taking us out with a superpower. Um, bringing in Lele is not the play. Um. I guess it's kind of. No, it actually is. It's the play. Because I can't. There's no way I win this game without Snorlax. There's no way. Is that the play? Do yeah. Um. Oh, do I let drip? Do I take out drip? Yeah. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doubling out. We're gonna double out. Uh, like I said, this matchup isn't good. So uh, just trying to do what I can. Oh, and the Hydro Pump. Oh, yeah, that's game. I'm just going to... Yeah, and it was a crit just to throw a little bit more salt moon, even though I, I think that would have uh, would have old code either, either way. But yeah, this matchup is really not in our favor, to say the least. And uh, <sighs> yeah, we're life orbed, so it's not like we can... 
It's like we can tank out hits or anything. Uh, it's not like our Lele can stay around somehow and just dish off powerful hits like Tailwind. <laughs> I try. I can try to Tailwind again and Golduck will likely try to protect. And I really don't want to. Yeah, I'm actually going to protect our Lele because I really don't want to knock out the. I don't want to knock out the uh, buzz hole without Golduck being gone. Because my opponent can then just set up rain later, so I see a protect likely coming from Golduck. They might also just withdrew, which is uh which is not ideal. That is not ideal at all. Oh, the double. Alright, that's actually not that's actually not that bad for us, honestly. Because we can now take out the, the Pelipper and avoid it being able to set up a Tailwind so that uh, we can maybe still uh, outspeed the Golduck. So that's pretty much what I'm looking at here. I really... Mm, it's still such a tough situation because... I need to, I somehow need to take out both of these Pokemon right now because Tapu Koko is going to take out our Drift Blim likely and um, Pel if I let Pelipper set up Tailwind though, we're in a really bad spot. We're in a terrible spot if I allow that. So I, yeah, I, I think I need to just get damage off on the Tapu Koko and definitely go for a Psychic on that Pelipper. Can't allow Pelipper to get up a Tailwind. I just cannot. I'm not sure it really matters at this point though. Because of the fact that, yeah, that uh, it's just going to be, it's going to be Snowax against the world and my opponent has a buzz hole in the back. So I'm just going to forfeit after this turn. GG's to my opponent. They played this perfectly. We needed a crit there. We needed the crit. Yeah, my opponent would have took out both of us either way. We no longer have the special defense boost because we, we withdrew. So my opponent now just goes into Buzzhole, and uh, and they win the game, and they definitely win the game. So GG's to my opponent. That Hydro Pump play was was definitely the play to make. I thought that my opponent would prioritize Ice Beam, but they might not even be running Ice Beam. They might be running something like Encore, which I have seen a lot on Golduck. And uh, yeah, it looks like Double Duck is back and very strong due to the fact that all, all of these uh, Drift Blim Lele teams are running around. And it has a very strong matchup against that, especially if you support it correctly with things like Buzz Hold for it. If the team has a, if the Drift One Melee team has a Snorlax, with things like Tapu Koko, which puts a lot of pressure on things like Celestilla, which these teams usually run to help uh, Lele with, uh, to help Lele uh, navigate a little bit better uh, around its weaknesses. So uh, yeah, the do Double Duck is back and it's very strong. Thank you guys so much for tuning in into today's episode of VGC Climbing the Ladder though. If you did enjoy yourself, like I said, hit that thumbs up button for me though. That'd be mean the world to me. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already for more VGC content as well as more of these Battle Spot videos. I'm going to get the heck out of here guys though. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.